Welcome back. In today's video, I'll share Redfin's latest housing market forecast through 2024 because they believe, by the way, that home prices will decrease next year. I'll share all their real estate market predictions for 2024 in today's video as well. I have a lot to share. I'm actually really excited to share this video with you guys. Uh, this was just posted on uh, December 5th. Uh, I didn't see it yesterday, but uh, it was posted then. It says listings will rise and prices and rates will fall. Uh, but high housing costs will remain a problem for young families, which will increase demand for large rentals and force President Biden to make affordability a cornerstone of his re-election bid. We're starting to see some signs of a shift towards a buyer's market as pandemic-driven inflation takes its last gasp. Mortgage rates coming down and more people deciding to list their house for sale next year. We expect these trends to continue in the new year, ushering a season of hope for spying home buyers. So they believe that um, because more people are going to decide to list their house for sale and uh, because we are still going to have this housing affordability challenge, uh, they believe this is the reasons why home prices will decrease next year. So it says here, their prediction, number one, home prices will fall 1%. Uh, I know you guys want to see home prices fall by, what, over 10%, but this is just their, their latest uh, housing market forecast here. Uh, prices will fall 1% year over year in the second and third quarters when the home selling season is in full swing. That will mark the first time prices have decreased on a year over year basis since 2012, when the housing market was, of course, recovering from the Great Recession, and also with the exception of a brief period of time in the first half of this year. So uh, just to kind of uh, provide some context regarding this, here's a look at the median sold price according to Redfin uh, this year compared to last year. Uh, last year is in black. The blue line is this year. So if you guys recall, this was all over the news back in the spring months uh, or this year. So in the spring months, let's just call it uh, February, that was the first time that home prices decreased on a year-over-year -year basis in about 12 years. And we're actually we're down compared to last year's levels ever since, or through, I should say, through more or less June this year. But of course, as you guys all know, um, home prices overall have been decreasing, but not decreasing at the same rate we saw last year. So right now we're seeing more or less a seasonal decrease in um, home prices, whereas last year our housing market was in shock mode due to a giant surge of inventory and also due to a giant increase of rates as well in a very short period of time. Rates more than doubled in less than one year, which of course shocked the housing market last year. So Redfin believes that we're going to get to uh, back to a year-over-year -year, uh, decrease in the uh, second and third quarters of 2024. Redfin also says here that prices are ending um, this year up by 3% compared to last year's levels. And the typical home buyer's monthly payment is only about $150 shy of the all-time record high. That's pretty wild, right? We have very close to all-time record highs for the average um, uh, home buying payment or average mortgage payment, and therefore, very close to all-time record lows for housing affordability. But despite that, prices um, are still going to increase by about 3% this year. At least that's what they're forecasting based on the data we have today. Home prices will be out of reach for many Americans, um, but any break in the affordability crisis will be welcome news for home buyers. So here's a look at their forecast uh, for the rest of this year and as well as uh, 2024. So in Q3 this year, we were up by 2.6% compared to Q3 of 2022. Uh, the fourth quarter, their uh, forecast is calling for a gain of 3% compared to the fourth quarter of 2022. Uh, flat in the first quarter next year and down 1% in Q2 and Q3 next year. In Q4, uh, they're calling for prices to be flat compared to Q4 of 2023. So big picture here, they're calling for prices to decrease uh, compared to the previous 12 months during the second quarter and third quarter next year, but to end the year flat compared to the fourth quarter this year. 
So please leave a comment below with your thoughts regarding this because um, I know a lot of people think that home prices are gonna crash next year, uh, but at least according to Redfin here, they're stating here that prices are gonna be relatively flat on a year-over-year -year basis. Now, um, here's some um, kind of reasoning why they believe that prices will decrease uh, two quarters next year. It says home prices will fall because supply will rise more than demand. So the amount of houses for sale will increase more than the increase in home buying demand. Uh, they cite here that we've recently seen a double digit annual increase in homeowners contacting Redfin in order to help sell their houses. In contrast, they're seeing a small uh, decrease in requests from recent home buyers. So we're seeing demand on the demand side, they're seeing that decrease, whereas on the supply side, they're seeing that increase in the double digit range compared to uh, 12 months ago. So Refin says here that listings will climb from 2023's record low as mortgage rate lock effect eases. Nearly all mortgage homeowners have a rate below the current level, right? Rates right now around 7.1%. A lot of people like myself have rates well below that. I'm at 2.6% right now. Um, of, of course, there's a lot of people who have rates in the fives, of course, right? It says many are starting to accept that we won't see rates in the threes or fours anytime soon. I am not um, holding my uh, breath in order to get to an environment in which rates decrease to 3% again. That was all time record lows going back to the 1970s. Um, so for anyone who's watching today's video who thinks that rates are gonna be in the threes or fours anytime soon, uh, honestly, uh, good luck here. Um, it also says here that uh, they may want to sell before prices decrease. I will add here that um, people's decision whether to buy or sell a house is a financial one, but also it's a, an emotional decision as well. If there's a sediment next year in which prices or in which people believe that home prices will decrease, that could also um, incentivize people to those sort of houses before home prices decrease further. Um, so that could just be a scenario that plays out next year. Interesting. Also, Redfin agents report that homeowners in places like South Florida, where prices have soared over the past few years, including Austin, Texas, and Boise, for example, and Utah, are deciding ca to cash out their equity and move to more affordable areas. That also could be a scenario as well. Let's just talk about how a lot of people have credit card debts, um, they're really being maxed out uh, on um, other uh, debts as well, such as HELOCs, for example. And so we could be in a scenario in which um, uh, there's this fear that home prices will decrease further, especially if we have two quarters next year in which prices decrease on a year of year basis. That hasn't happened since 2012. So that'd be all over the news uh, regarding prices uh, decreasing. So if that actually happens, we could be in a scenario in which um, people are fearful of losing the equity in their houses and they're already maxed out on their credit cards. So they decide to sell their house and rent uh, in order to uh, basically pay off all their debts and have money to uh, live life, right? Uh, what do you guys think about this? So leave me a comment below. Let's also talk about their other predictions here. Uh, let's talk about rates or home sales, I should say, and then we'll talk about rates. So uh, their prediction number three is that home sales will increase and end the year up by 5%. So sales uh, will continue rising throughout the year next year. Uh, they'll be on pace for a total of 4.5 million by the fourth quarter. Home sales will speed up throughout 2024, which is night and day difference between what happened this year, what's happening this year, because home sales are basically going like this uh, because a lot of people are not opting to, or a lot of people are opting not to sell their houses. And of course, demand has also decreased greatly, which is causing sales uh, to uh, more or less uh, decrease to the lowest levels in about 10 plus years. So overall, uh, Redfin is expecting uh, 4.3 million um, home sales in 2024, up by about 5% year over year. I believe they're talking about existing home sales. So at 4.3 million next year, my predictions that I stated uh, several months ago, this year is at 4.1 million, which seems to be in line with Redfin because an increase of 5% from this year uh, puts us at 4.1 million this year, which would be their forecast to increase then uh, to 4.3 million in 2024. 
they talk about here the crucial difference between this year and next year will be sales gaining momentum throughout the year instead of losing momentum that we're seeing right now. So here's a chart showing just that. So Q3, we're at 4.02 million. Their forecast for the fourth quarter this year is at 3.85 million. That's very, very low. Uh, basically a 13-year low in home sales. Uh, but then next year, every single quarter, it's going to increase, at least according to their latest uh, real estate market predictions. And also to end the year at 4.5 million. I should say uh, the 4.5 million is the seasonally adjusted annualized rate for Q4 of 2024. But overall, they're expecting 4.3 million for the entire year next year. Let's also talk about uh, mortgage rates as well, because there's a lot of talk regarding when's the Fed going to pivot. Um, and of course, when will uh, rates decrease to levels below 7 and 6% here? So prediction number four, rates will steadily decrease but remain above 6%. This is in 2024. We predict the average 30-year fixed rate will linger at 7% during the first quarter next year, then to decrease throughout the year. Rates will fall to about 6.6% .6 by the end of 2024. The gradual decline in rates combined with a small dip in prices will bring home buyers some much needed relief. Uh, that, of course, will increase housing affordability, which, of course, is very much needed here. Um, I always talk about this, how we have very low le levels of housing affordability, making it very challenging for everyday Americans uh, to purchase a house which is sad but true. So it'd be great to see um, home prices and rates decrease, uh, which of course will make housing affordability better. My only concern here is that if rates decrease to a level that really increases demand, that will cause home prices to increase further, making housing affordability even worse than it is right now. In any case, they say here the Fed will likely keep interest rates at their current level at the start of the year, even though inflation is largely under control. But then they're likely to cut rates two to three times starting the summer months next year, which is why mortgage rates will decrease as the year goes on here. So here's a look at this. So Q4, they're calling for the average rate uh, in Q4 this year to be at 7.3%, but then it decrease every quarter thereafter and to end the year at 6.6% during Q4. I think this goes in line with what the Fed is telling us as well, because the Fed is saying we're going to have um, higher rates for longer. So uh, that is basically true right here, because we're going to be above 6% uh, for the entire year next year, uh, at least according to Redfin here. You know, of course, leave me a comment below with your thoughts regarding this. Um, there's a lot of other uh, predictions in this uh, article here. And just like my previous videos or all my videos, I'll provide a link to this article in the video description below here. So let's also talk about renting here. It says, with home prices so high, buying a house doesn't offer the same financial upside. Rather than shelling out cash on agent fees, uh, interest on a loan, property taxes, insurance, and maintenance, many will decide that renting and investing their money in other ways makes the most sense. I can kind of see why um, people may decide to rent rather than buying. Um, and my, we bought a house that is, gosh, 50 plus years old. It seems like um, every single uh, month I'm reaching out to my handyman to uh, talk about uh, fixing something in my house, whether it's irrig irrigation, a leaky, whatever, um, things just go wrong, right? So uh, there's a lot of maintenance involved in buying a house, especially if you're looking to buy an older house, such as my house. Um, so I can um, <laughs> say that I would love the peace of mind of renting and not worrying about anything breaking because you can just call your landlord. Um, there's pros and cons, of course, for renting and owning, of course, as well. Um, overall, I do like owning, but there's a lot of costs and uh, time involved. Uh, it says we expect prices of large rental units to climb next year as supply fails to meet demand. However, there will be a downward pressure on prices for small rentals because there's uh, there's more of them and a backlog waiting to hit the market. So something I talk about on the channel is construction numbers. So here's a look at our good Uncle Fred here, and the source here is the U.S. Census Bureau. I'll provide a link in the video description below here. So here's a look at the number of units under construction for multifamily uh, units. 
These are buildings with five units or more. So more or less apartment buildings. So right now the uh, seasonally adjusted annualized rate for the number of units under construction is 987,000. Uh, the previous all-time record uh, high uh, pre-COVID was set back in the 1970s when that number was approximately 901,000. So right now we're very, very close to all-time record highs for the number of houses or number of apartment buildings under construction. Now looking at the past one year though, it's a little bit different here. So the peak was uh, set back in July this year when the pace was just over 1 million uh, units under construction. It has decreased very slightly. Now we're at 987,000. But because we're very close to all-time record highs for the number of units under construction, this means that those, or these apartment buildings will be completed perhaps in the next six to 12 months. And therefore, that'll put downward pressure on prices as supply increases in the marketplace. Now, of course, every real estate market is different here, but overall on a national level, we're seeing a sharp rise of construction of apartment buildings and therefore um, rents for smaller units should decrease next year. At least that's what I'm predicting. And it seems like that's what uh, Redfin is also predicting as well. Something I talk about on the channel uh, fairly uh, frequently here is that real estate is local, right? So national trends may not pertain in your neck of the woods. And therefore, some areas um, we're seeing prices increase. And of course, other areas such as Austin, Texas, uh, prices are decreasing on a year-over-year -year basis. So Redfin says here that prices will fall a lot in some metros next year and rise in others. So for example, they expect prices to fall fairly significantly in parts of coastal Florida. That includes uh, Northport and Cape Coral. That's partially because prices increase so much during the pandemic boom. And of course, that leaves a lot of room to fall. And this is also partially due to the fact, in their opinion here, uh, due to the increasing risk of climate disasters, which of course is making it um, less affordable to own a house there due to an increase of home insurance rates. In contrast, home prices are likely to increase in more affordable metros. Uh, such as Albany, New York, uh, Worcester, New York, and Grand or Grand Rapids, uh, Michigan. Riffin also believes there will be a wave of boomerang migration. Let me just briefly explain this. So, of course, right at the onset of COVID and in 2021 as well, we had a lot of people moving out of cities and buying houses in Sacramento, where I live and work as a real estate agent, um, Austin, Texas, uh, Boise, Idaho, etc., moving to uh, more affordable areas because they have this ability or this new ability uh, to work at home. So they believe, or Redfin believes here, that many uh, remote workers will actually boomerang back due to work at home arrangements uh, decreasing. So for example, tech workers moving back to Seattle from Boise, Idaho, as companies enforce in-office policies. This is actually uh, something that's gonna be uh, interesting to track because if we do start to see this uh, boomerang migration, uh, this could cause these um, pandemic boom towns uh, to decrease further if those people were buying houses, right? If you bought a house in 2020, uh, 2021, in which you could uh, work at home, but then your uh, employer, employer is saying that, hey, you have to come back to the office now, they're gonna be forced to sell their houses and move back to the office or close to the office. So that really could impact um, these uh, pandemic boom towns next year. Uh, time will tell, and I'll definitely keep you posted. Before I wrap this video up, I want to provide uh, their upside scenario as well as their downside scenario, because of course their forecast could change uh, given um, a lot of uh, uncertainty in the financial markets, our US economy, uh, the conflict in the Middle East, Ukraine, et cetera here. So here's their upside scenario. The weekly average of a 30-year fixed rate uh, drops to the 5% range. Again, average uh, daily rates today is around 7.1%. So the upside scenario is, is a scenario in which rates decrease to about 5% uh, plus. That could happen if the economy or, or the U.S. economy falls into a recession. While higher unemployment would drag down demand, the effect of lower rates 
could or would outweigh this effect, pushing prices up above 3% and sales up by about 5 million or up to about 5 million uh, compared to the 4.3 million they're forecasting. That's the upside potential here. The downside scenario here is that if rates surpassed 8%, the last time that happened was back in the 2000s. I believe they mean on a monthly basis because of course we've had a couple of days in which rates have surpassed 8% for people with great credit. But looking at uh, a, a monthly rate at 8% or above, the last time that happened was back in the year 2000 or early 2000s. And according to Redfin, that could happen if the Fed holds interest rates steady all year. Home prices could fall 5% or more and home sales could drop into the 3.5 million range. In my opinion, this downside scenario would uh, or only could happen if inflation doesn't wind down to the Fed's target rate of around 2%. And therefore, the Fed is forced to keep rates at a high level, keeping mortgage rates, of course, high as well, which of course would impact prices and home sales next year. With that said, please make a comment below with your thoughts regarding this latest housing market forecast according to Redfin here. Hope you guys have an awesome day. Like and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video.